خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم. The story of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and the companions who stood by his side is such an amazing, beautiful, heart-touching story because it shows us how a small group of people who are committed to a cause can bring something that started from a cave to now a religion that is growing at such a fast rate and has reached the corners of the world. The success that we see of Islam today that we are Muslims sitting here in this gathering, that we've traveled from different parts of this nation to spend some days reflecting over our deen and connecting with the legacy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This whole story that where we are now and where it started, it's humbling, it's touching. Behind every great success, there's someone's sacrifice. You don't just wake up in the morning to success. Someone put hard blood, someone put their sweat into something. Someone put their dreams on hold, someone put their own luxuries on hold. And if we try to go back to the beginning of this story, we see the Prophet ﷺ returning from Ghar Hira, shaking and trembling, being comforted by his wife Khadija radiallahu anha. And he shares with her that he was just blessed with the honor of Nubuwa prophethood. So Khadija radiallahu anha joins his cause and his call, and she says, I'm with you. And it's two people sitting together one day, he's telling her the story and she's accepting it. And then people tag along and this caravan grows and it grows and grows and people from different walks of life and the battles that occurred and the struggles and so many challenges. And when you study that biography and that story of Rasulullah wasallam, not only do you see a beautiful historical narrative that serves as a blueprint for success and growth as communities. But it also gives us an insight into what kind of person Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. I had the opportunity to teach Sirah a few different times. Some years back, Sheikh Abdul Nasir had requested that I teach the Sirah again specifically for the Qalam podcast so it could become a public resource. So we covered the whole prophetic biography in 23 sessions. And one thing that became very clear to me, that the Prophet Sallallahu had amazing traits, but there was one characteristic of his that really stood out to me. And that was that Rasulullah Sallallahu was a very, very loyal person. He didn't forget people. He wasn't someone that you would do something nice to him and move on and he would forget you. That's not who Rasulullah Sallallahu was. He would remember them. He remembered the love and comfort of Khadija radiallahu anha for as long as he lived. He couldn't forget her. And when he would speak of her, there would be such joy and happiness in that speech of his that Aisha radiallahu anha, she would feel a mild form of jealousy and she would say that she's gone and we're here. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say that Khadija was Khadija. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not forget those who played that role in his life. The battle of Uhud occurs in the third year after migration. Third year after migration, for the following seven years, it was close to being a weekly practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he would go from Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina Munawwara to Uhud and pay his regards to those that were buried there. 
the last trip Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made in his life outside of his home and his masjid was where? It was to the graveyard of Baqiyah. Abu Muwayhiba, the khadim of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, one night Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam woke up and he went to the graveyard of Baqiyah and I followed him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat at the graves and he cried for all the companions that were with him on this journey of Islam who stood by his side through thick and thin and who didn't cower away. And then when he left the graveyard, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a servant of Allah was given a choice between the world and the hereafter and he has chosen the hereafter. And therefore the next morning, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ill, his illness started which lasted until he departed this dunya. The last public sermon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered in his life, it was after dhuhr salah. Just one or two days before he passed away. The Sahaba were praying dhuhr behind Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived in the masjid and Abu Bakr saw him. He had been leading prayer for a few days now and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come to the masjid. So when he saw Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there, he was leading, he stepped back. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, stay in your place. The Prophet ﷺ then came to the front of the congregation. He sat down and he led the remainder of that prayer. The Prophet ﷺ only led half of that salah. And even that he led sitting down. After the prayer was over, the Prophet ﷺ delivered his last public sermon. And in that sermon, Rasulullah ﷺ said, May Allah's mercy be upon the muhajirun. First he made dua for those that were martyred in Uhud. He remembered them again. Then he turned to the muhajirun and said to them that you guys migrated with me. May Allah elevate you and reward you for all your sacrifice, for standing by me and trusting me when we were few. Then he turned to the Ansar, the residents of Medina, and said to them that you hosted us, you gave us family, you gave us your home, you opened up the doors for us. We will never forget you. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to the congregation and said, if there is anyone here that I owe anything to, come forward so we can settle our affair. The, ha the Sahaba sat silently without a word. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, today I have paid back the debt of every person, but there is one person whose debt I have not paid back, and I will not be able to pay it back either. And he then turned towards Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an had his head lowered down and he was crying. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Zawwajani ibnatahu hamalani ila dar al-hijrah anfaqa alayya malahu. He gave me his daughter. My beloved wife, Aisha, was Abu Bakr's gift. Hamalani ila dar al-hijrah, he accompanied me on the journey of migration, life-risking journey. But he stood by my side, didn't walk away. Anfaqa alayya malahu, when I met Abu Bakr, he was a wealthy man, now he's broke. He spent all of his money on me too. Imam Suyuti rahmatullahi alayhi in his tariq al-khulafa, after narrating this, he narrates another riwayah, in which he says that in that moment, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh had his head bowed down and he was crying, and he kept repeating one statement. He said, وَهَلْ أَنَا وَمَالِي إِلَّا لَكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O oh, Messenger of Allah, you keep saying that I gave you wealth, I gave you wealth. Why else did Allah give me life and wealth if it wasn't to serve you, O oh, Messenger of Allah? You owe me nothing. It was an honor to be your companion. It was an honor to stand by your side and put my life at risk as yours was at risk. It was an honor to be a part of your joy in life by, me, by you marrying my daughter. This man's loyalty and his sacrifice was never forgotten by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I know that being a Muslim, every day there is some struggle involved. Some days you think, when will I wake up and there won't be a struggle? Half of the days you don't even know why you're frustrated. You don't know what's going on. Who do I call? Kisse maange, kaha jaye, kisse kahe? Ab dunya mein tere siwa kone hai. Right? The poet, he says, who do I turn to? Who do I ask? Kisse maange, kaha jaye, kisse kahe? There's no one left. There's only one person left, Ya Allah, and that's you, so I'm turning to you and 
trying to figure this out. The sacrifice of being a Muslim in the world that you live in, the sacrifice of raising children on Islam in the world that we live in, the sacrifice of building Islamic institutions where this is happening right now is no small feat. This is great. And even though we haven't met Rasulullah yet, I need you to know, and this is very important, that you have to know the Prophet ﷺ was extremely loyal to those that cared and loved him. He remembered them every time. And this hard work, the sacrifice that you and I are going through, and I speak to you first and foremost, it will not go unrewarded. So don't be afraid of taking on a challenge in life. Don't be afraid of losing and don't treat those tears that come out at the time of frustration as a call of defeat. Rather, you're just on that journey and you're walking away on a path that no one said was going to be easy and your reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sacrifice will be necessary. Today, the history of Islam in America is being written. Maybe a hundred years from now, someone will be born from our progeny who will write a book on the history of Islam in America and the challenges Muslims took on to build institutions and communities. We aren't the first to be here. Books like this have already been written, but this is an ongoing history. And sometimes I wonder that if I read that book, I wonder what they would write about us, that these were people who were too busy living their luxuries that no one bothered to sacrifice for this deen, or will they say that these were people who had dreams like everyone else, but they chose the way of the Sahaba. They put their Bentleys and their Mercedes and their BMWs and their three-car garages and their 5,000 square foot homes and their trampolines and their pools and all the vacations that they had planned on hold because they understood that their patience in this world would in return offer opportunity to other human beings and that carried much more value. Success comes with sacrifice, my friends. And today we remind you of that as we remind ourselves. That when you're giving in the path of Allah, don't just give until you're comfortable. Growth happens when you're uncomfortable. Feel a pinch. Let shaitan begin to tell you that, are you sure you want to do this? That's when you know you're doing it right. That you're getting under shaitan's skin. Are you sure you want to go to Ikhna? Like you can watch the live stream, you know that, right? And you say, no, I'm going to go. This is the right thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the tawfiq to be willing to take on those challenges in life. And may he allow this reality to crystallize in our hearts that at the end of all of these sacrifices lies the pleasure of Allah and maybe on the day of judgment a hug from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu ta'ala ala sallam Muhammad assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh